Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very sad, um, and, and it's, it's, uh, the, the allegations were quite serious. Uh, he, he, he hacked into the Pentagon's mainframe and NASA's mainframe, but he suffers from Asperger's syndrome, and, and that can make people incredibly intelligent, gifted, but they can have some very serious mental health problems as well. And Gary McKinnon, when he was arrested, was very clear in saying that he'd done it. Uh, but he said he was looking for flying saucers. He was looking for UFOs. Um, and notwithstanding that, the, the U.S. said they wanted him extradited. Um, and Gary McKinnon, in terms of his own personal health, according to his, his family and campaigners, has gone into a sort of flat spin since then, suffered all sorts of problems and was terrified about, uh, in, in his mind, that he might be waterboarded and all this sort of thing at the hands of the Americans. Um, and so they've been fighting extradition for all this time. Now, before they came into power, David Cameron, the leader of the Conservative Party, and Nick Clegg, the leader of, of the Liberal Democrats, who are the other coalition partner here, both said in opposition that they wouldn't have him extradited. And so they've made this campaign promise, uh, which they've now, they're now stuck to. The, the Home Secretary, a woman called Theresa May, in this country, uh, has taken medical advice and decided that uh, Gary McKinnon uh, would be at risk of taking his own life. And so, therefore, she said uh, in the House of Commons uh, today that she would not send him on the plane. After careful consideration of all of the relevant material, I have concluded that Mr McKinnon's extradition would give rise to such a high risk of him ending his life that a decision to extradite would be incompatible with Mr McKinnon's human rights. I have therefore withdrawn the extradition, extradition order against Mr McKinnon. It will now be for the Director of Public Prosecutions to decide whether Mr McKinnon has a case to answer in a UK court. Uh, so Lawrence, just looking ahead and going forward, does this mean that we might be seeing changes in UK extradition rules? Yeah, the Gary McKinnon announcement was coupled with another one. Uh, and, and what she said was that in future, it would be up to a court, a special thing in this country they're, they're establishing called the Forum Bar, to decide on individual cases of extradition. And so it's not automatically assumed now that the, the, the Americans, for all the pressure they can put on foreign countries, would actually have their way if they want somebody extradited to the United States. Of course, this follows very, very immediately after the extradition of Abu Hamza and Baba Ahmad to, to the United States. Baba Ahmad's uh, campaigners have unleashed a furious reaction, saying uh, there's one rule for Muslims and another rule for people like Gary McKinnon. Uh, but, of course, the other big case that this raises question over is that of Julian Assange, who has always said that he thought the British wanted to have him extradited to the United States. Well, the, the logic of this announcement today is that any case like his would have to go through a court in this country and the relative merits of it would have to be determined. And so I think it, it, it may be that in one sense that weakens the case of someone like Julian Assange in just assuming that something's going to happen, where now there will be a sort of a legal framework uh, which could potentially, and we're now seeing it in Gary McKinnon's case, provide some sort of buffer uh, some, uh, against people automatically being extradited to the United States in the future.